Mm-hmm. Today we're going to do a real nice fish broth. And fish broth is one of Thomas's favorite meals, so I know he's real excited for this one. So right off the bat, if you notice anything different about this video today, is that I'm doing voiceovers, which is the original way that I started doing these videos. I'm doing voiceovers today because my mic conked out on me yesterday, so I had to revert to the old way. So some of the sounds that you would hear, like, you know, thing cutting up and thing frying up and thing in the pot, you're not going to hear that. You're going to just be hearing my voice. So yeah, back to the fish broth. Well, you know, the first thing I had to do is go in the market and get my fish. And let me tell you something. At $50 a pound for kingfish, you had to call this Mr. Kingfish. Other people would use, you know, the crow crow or whatever kind of fish that you prefer in your fish broth. And that's fine. But for me, I like a steaky fish, a fish with less bone in it. It's less hassle. So I like like kingfish and marlin and tuna and things for my fish broth. So I have my kingfish here and you know after buying it in the market you want to wash it and clean it so you know I'll give it all rinse out then you know lime it up with some lime and now we're going to season it. So to season it I have you know the usual suspects. Now if you're watching this channel long enough or watching me cook long enough you realize that I don't really cook with green seasoning but when I'm doing fish you know when I'm seasoning my fish I like to make my green seasoning fresh. So I have all the necessary ingredients here to make our green seasoning. Garlic, ginger, pimento, celery, sive, shadow benny, and a scotch bonnet pepper. You wanna add the herbs to our food processor, add the ginger, garlic, pimento, scotch bonnet pepper, and you wanna blend this up until it forms a nice paste. And that's our nice trini green seasoning there. Real good for fish, but I mean, great for other things as well. You know, chicken, it's real nice and a pale out for peas and that kind of thing. Real multi-purpose is like our version of our all-purpose seasoning. You know, green seasoning is a real MVP in Trini cooking. And once everything is blended up, you want to transfer that to a bowl. I like to add a little salt it and then add my lime juice. Good to go here. And now I want to add it to my fish and I want to rub all the pieces of the fish with our green seasoning. And I have my fish head here. And I know a lot of people are real squirmish when it comes to, you know, fish head and that kind of thing. But like fish head and fish tail is a real important part of building flavor in a fish broth. But more on that later. When you reach to that point, I will explain to you how the fish head is an important part to this whole scene. So now that we have our fish real nice and seasoned up here, I want to set that aside and let me prep the other ingredients. Cutting up one large onion. Dicing one pound of pumpkin and I like to add pumpkin to my fish broth because it has given it enough thickness without adding any kind of starch to it. Now. I mean, yes, the potato and the other provisions that I add to it would release a little bit of starch in it, but I really do like a thick fish broth at all. My fish broth needs to be real nice and brothy, but not too thin, so just in the middle. Another ingredient that I really like to use in my fish broth is tomato. Tomato does give it a real nice flavor. So I like to put a lot of tomato inside of there as well. I have one large potato that I cut it up into some small cubes here. And of course, must have okra. At least my fish broth must have okra. So add in some okra as well. And I'm cubing up some carrots here. Carrots is also a main staple in my fish broth. All right, so now we have all our ingredients laid out. Our mise en place, as they would say. Now it's time to get this fish broth underway. Starting off with some oil and two tablespoons of butter in a pot. So now we're going to add the fish head into the butter and the oil. And what we're doing here is incorporating all that great flavor that's found in the fish head into the fat. And then the fat in turn is going to permeate the entire dish and have that nice fish flavor going straight through the dish so that when we sip on the broth, it's going to have rich fish flavor in the broth itself. No watery, tasteless broth, nah. We build in flavor from the ground up here. And for that, you really want to use your fish head or your fish tail. That is the parts of the fish that you want to use to build the flavor into the fish broth. And now I add in the onions, add in some of the green seasoning, and you know that's the herbs, the ginger, the garlic, the scotch bonnet pepper. Add our tomatoes. Now you want to add the pumpkin. 
give that a toss. And now you want to cover this and allow it to simmer for about 10 to 15 minutes. So after about 15 minutes, our base is, you know, nice and broken down. The pumpkin is softened. The tomatoes are cooked. Everything is, you know, going along nicely. Now I want to add the carrots, the okra, the potatoes, and I had some frozen dashing in the fridge there, so I throw in that in too. And not too much because I don't want to add too much provision to make the fish broth thick. As I say, I don't like a thick fish broth. I like my fish broth to be nice and brothy and kind of, you know, thinnish, but not too thin. So I'm not adding too much provision for this because the provision will release its starch into the broth. Adding 10 to 12 cups of water and you want to bring that to a boil. Now you wanna cover it and allow it to cook for about 15 minutes or until the provisions and the veggies are cooked. And the last thing you want to add is your pieces of fish. Now fish doesn't take long to cook at all. So you want to add this last because you don't really want the fish breaking up too much into the fish broth. You want some nice healthy pieces of fish in your fish broth. So the last thing that goes in is your fish steaks and again, it's not going to take long to cook. In about three to four minutes, this will be finished cooking. And all the seasoning that was in the bowl with the fish, you want to add that into the pot as well. We're not throwing that away. We can't waste that. All that is great flavor. So you want to add that into the pot as well. And once the fish is finished cooking, you want to taste again for salt. Make sure you have enough salt and that kind of thing. Adjust to suit. And if you want to squeeze some fresh lime in there, feel free. I mean, I really like a limey fish broth. So... A fresh lime squeeze in there would be nice, but I had enough lime in the green seasoning, so it was just right. It was perfect. So now, the moment I've been waiting for, and the moment that Thomas has been waiting for, time to plate up and eat. I know he can't wait to eat this, so let me do stick. I'm gonna lie, a nice bowl of fish broth on a Saturday, that's real lush. Again, I ain't sticking in no. They can eat one time, and yeah, mm-hmm, this real best shit all the attention we paid in the early steps of this dish to you know season the fish and then build flavor using the fish head with the fat adding the aromatics letting that cook down for 15 minutes by itself all that does pay off in the end because you're getting all that flavor going straight through the dish the broth itself real flavorful and then you have you know the fish and thing tasting real best because we season it up nice Trust and believe, if you follow this method of making fish broth, yeah, ratings every time. If you like this recipe, please give the video a thumbs up and give it a share. And look out for a link to the full recipe, I'll post it in the video description. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please take a moment to do so. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. I'm going to wrap this up because I know Thomas can't wait to dig in. We'll see you all later. Bless.